Thank you so much for listening to Urbanistica podcast. I am Mustafa Sharif, an urban planner, and you're more than welcome to join my big journey of exploring the making of smarter and more livable cities. Please don't forget to follow Urbanistica on the different social media platforms. And also let's connect on LinkedIn. Big thanks to Urbanistica podcast partner, Avery. Avery is an international engineering and design company providing sustainable solutions in the fields of energy, industry and infrastructure. Are you ready for a new episode? Let's go for it. So, Marcin, first let me welcome you to Urbanistica Podcast Clubhouse. So, thank you so much for coming here digitally. Thank you for inviting me. So, yes, uh, to all the listeners, uh, this is our second Clubhouse event, and I'm looking forward to do more and have you here to talk. And also, I just want to announce that next week, uh, Urbanistica Podcast will have a room in Clubhouse, and it will be together with a festival called Gather Festival. So we will talk about cities of the future, cities for people, and creative city. I will be really happy to have you there. So uh, I will write all the the, um, details on the episode description, so no need to check something up now. So I would love to welcome Martin one more time. And me and Martin, we met... uh, digitally i think in january and we recorded a great episode uh, to his podcast really great podcast and now i will just leave the stage to martin please martin tell us about yourself give us a highlight and also about your podcast the aim of it and so on so the stage is yours uh thank you thank you very much mustafa uh, so I'm, I'm happy to be here and thank you for inviting me uh, as well uh, I'm uh, I'm Marcin. I'm uh, coming from uh, Poland originally, from Warsaw, and I was studying urban planning uh, in uh, in Warsaw. But very soon after I started studying, I actually uh, moved to Sweden first for Erasmus Exchange, and then I did my master studies in uh, in Sweden in Lund. And basically, that's where I fell in love uh, with urban design and especially sustainable urban design. So I started to really kind of care about these important issues that we have in in cities. So it's not only about designing very nice buildings and designing very nice neighborhoods with a lot of greenery. It's also about the people, about the the social interactions. And that's what I'm trying to uh, include in my work uh, as as urbanist and urban designer and podcaster as well. so basically, I started my podcast like almost one year ago, but it was mostly in Polish. And since January, I started in English as well, because I know so many people and I, I have so many friends who, uh, who speak English. So I really wanted to expand and kind of approach more and more people. And that's how I um, invited you to my podcast as well in January, when we talk, where we talked about uh, 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 podcasts in uh, city making. Yeah, exactly. It was a great episode. And Martin, did you imagine that you will be uh, an urban designer and running a podcast when you were like young or even maybe a child or no? Uh, Not at all. I need to say that uh, I didn't expect the things that I'm doing now. And especially I didn't expect that I will live abroad. And I remember when my, uh, my uncle uh, told me once that I was so shy that he never ever thought that I would, you know, uh, move abroad and start making a career in a completely different, not even city, but different country. So I think it's uh, it's it's very kind of funny to see uh, that I developed so much and I'm living abroad in Scandinavia for almost five years right now. And yeah, I'm you know, pursuing my dream of having a. Uh, kind of an impact in urbanism, in city making, and hence I created the podcast, which I didn't expect that will be, uh, yeah, I mean, that will be such a nice tool for meeting extremely uh, nice people. Uh, you involved, Mustafa. That's amazing. That's amazing to hear that. So let, tell me, what is the background of you starting the podcast? Like, what is your podcast? Why? Uh, so for me, it's, 
kind of might be a bitter sweet story because I was starting my first internship in uh, Copenhagen um, already almost two years ago and I worked a lot. It was uh, a lot of tasks. I've, I've been spending late afternoons in the office and I started to looking for some uh, relaxation or uh, just I was listening to a lot of music and then suddenly by some maybe uh, accident I found out uh, about podcasts and I, I fell in love with podcasts immediately. So I started to listen a lot, a lot of podcasts and it was mostly about sport, about politics, about not, not about cities actually <laughs> uh, too much. And then I realized, okay, I mean, it's awesome to make a podcast. Why can't I make a nice podcast about cities if I can't find one which answers my needs? So that's where, when I kind of realized that I love speaking, I, I'm, I, I'm very social. I, I love meeting people. And podcasting is something that kind of fulfills this uh, need of me meeting people and getting to know interesting things about cities and, and other things. So I kind of put those puzzle, puzzle pieces together and created a podcast, but it also took, took me some time because from the first thought until I released my first episode, I think it was over like four months or something. Wow. I, I, I had to why? develop this thought in, uh, in me. Uh -huh. So why, what, why did it? takes so long time is it the technical part the storytelling i think that i kind of had to uh think about it i was uh, thinking at the beginning that maybe you know i mean what what will people uh, uh, say about my podcast what if they will not like it and so on so i kind of i i think i had to um grow grow this idea inside me uh, so so it was mostly this uh, kind of not technical thing at all. I was uh, kind of okay with the technical <laughs> part, but I was kind of, I don't know, I think I was just waiting for a right moment and then the pandemic came and I was like, okay, I mean, that's that's the time. It's, it's now or never. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So tell me you're from Poland and uh, do people, is, is there any uh, podcast culture? Like, do people really listen to podcasts? Like maybe how they watch YouTube? Uh, I think it's growing and more and more and i think that actually the most uh, famous topics for podcasts that people listen to are lifestyle business or crime podcasts wow and i'm not i wasn't such a huge fan of the crime uh, of the crime podcast but it has something in it sometimes and uh, but yeah i mean I, I i kind of felt that podcast is such an amazing tool because i love to listen to podcasts that uh, teach me something so I almost treat it as I was reading a book or something. Mm, that's amazing. Yeah, I, I, I think for me, it's like I'm more in love with listening to the podcast because I think in the podcast, there are more, much more feelings and people express themselves. You know, like in books, they are fixed. Like the words, like the author thinks a lot before uh, she or he write the word. But in podcasts, like you, you, sometimes you can get like, interesting stories that uh, they will never write on, uh, you know, on the books or a newspaper. So Martin, tell me, let's, now let's talk about the tools that uh, we, w we use to plan cities. So uh, as you, you work with urban design, so let me know what are the different tools that you are using now in Copenhagen? Uh, so I, I think that if you talk about architecture and urban planning, urban design, you maybe shouldn't, but I will somehow start it uh, with uh, the digital tools. Mm. And because as I said before, I think that the, the most important part is the social layer. So to meet the people who you design for, and that that's why I've been doing kind of this social engagement, urban prototyping projects back in Warsaw, but to kind of speak about what I was, what, what I'm doing right now. So I'm designing a lot, uh, in, uh, in digital, uh, world, so to say. So I use a lot of, uh, computer tools. I, I use a lot of, uh, uh, design, uh, applications, design software that kind of enables us to put our ideas onto paper. I mean, first on into the computer and then onto the paper. And that's how you technically create those projects. So the tools, are mostly digital. The tools is the tracing paper, of course, to sketch a lot. The tools is also workshops and talking to your colleagues. 
I think it's extremely, extremely important, but uh, we can't forget about approaching people that we design for, of course. Exactly. And now you're talking about approaching people and so on, because usually here and within the planning process uh, in Sweden, at least, that uh, you, people should be part of this process and uh, should give a feedback to the urban designer or urban planner about what the planner does. So tell me, how do you communicate your project with the with people, with the community? Like images, videos, how do you do? I mean, uh, yeah, nowadays you do it exactly like this. So you produce some uh, graphic material, uh, you just try to visualize your idea in a way. So either if it's a master plan for uh, a district of, of some city, you would show it in a plan, you would show it in a section, you would show it with a visual or a perspective to basically show the atmosphere that you uh, try to achieve in this project. So basically you produce a lot of, a lot of graphic material, you design a lot because of course the, pro the project you propose, it needs to be feasible in a way. So you can't, you can't uh, kind of you know, design everything just out of the blue. You have to have this uh, technical knowledge as well. Uh, so I would say that these are the most important parts of kind of selling your project. And videos are, uh, are there sometimes as well, maybe not that often because it also needs a lot of time. Mm. Uh, so I would say it depends on the project as well. Yeah. So is, is it a lot of 2D graphic um, production or do you do a 3D as well? Like when, uh, when you like when you communicate mm -hmm. to the people, uh, I would say that it's nice to start with a two D uh, image just to show, for example, the plan or a section of something to show the heights. But personally, I think that you always need to end up with a three di dimensional model or three dimensional image because this is how people who are not into urban planning can try to understand the the city, the design in a better way. And that's why I'm, I'm a huge fan of uh, city models. Uh, and I mean here the physical models. So sometimes if you visit a city and you can go to the city museum or to the city hall, some of the cities have those amazing physical models of the whole city. And one of them might be in Singapore. And I think that when I was doing my master thesis about Singapore, I made like 100 photos of this physical model because <laughs> wow. I was so amazed by how they help to understand the citizens, how the city looks like, and to understand the dimensions and the complexity of, of such, a, such a city. Yeah, exactly. And here, actually, uh, you just reminded me that in Stockholm, we have a, a room it's called, uh, I think, Stockholm Room, something like this. And we have a model, not of the entire city, but of a big part of the city, mm -hmm. a 3D model that you can walk on it. It's like underneath. So they have glasses on the okay. top and you can walk and point on, you know, on different areas and so on. So it gives a big understanding of the city and the new development. So what do you think about, so now we, we talked about like the 2D graphic, like images, sections, plans, as a tool to communicate the project to, to people. And also now we are into this uh, physical model as a tool also to communicate. What do you think, is there a big consu consuming of 3D model with VR? Mm -hmm. I, I think that might be also uh, the future of how you show your design ideas. And I think it, it has some pros and cons because I think it's extremely, uh, extremely interesting to see your design and especially as a citizen, uh, as a future resident, it has to be so amazing to see your future home, your future neighborhood, your future park. I mean, it, it, it's unbelievable how, how can you basically see those things in, uh, in VR. Uh, but also I think that it creates uh, Kind of this feeling that if it's not like this you might be disappointed you know like yeah. uh, if, if, if the project goes in a different direction at the end like you see all those images in your head and you might be disappointed and i think that also it might be a bit of a scary <laughs> tool I, I i remember when i when i was looking at the vr of uh, city of lund one one time i it, it almost got me very dizzy and very kind of uh, um, surprised because the model was without people, without cars, without anything. It was just, you know, just pure concrete. 
and it was a bit scary i need to say mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah because the thing here like as as a general uh, how to say mindset here in in sweden that we try not to go into the details in order to not disappoint people like let's say uh, if i do a create a 3d model for the vr and then i put a lot of people i go into the details of buildings how the buildings will look like and then we know in the end like it will not really look like as the model in reality so people will be even more disappointed so that's why like the general thoughts that okay try to keep it simple you know like just a solid model without any life a kind of <laughs> But I I understand it's like uh, there are two sides of uh, this 3D modeling. So let's get into the podcast, which is our or the the tool that from my side I wanted to get it as an official tool to plan cities. Mm-hmm. So uh, what do you think? Like how much podcast is influencing your thoughts as an urban planner and designer? Uh, so when I was preparing myself for for this talk that we are having i i just wrote this uh, sentence that podcasts rule the world and change cities Mm. and i think that the first way to do it is by educating people and i think that the education is the most crucial part of it and i would say that i'm i'm not listening to a lot of podcasts uh about architecture or cities in general, because I think that many of them are very inclusive and technical. So if I, I can imagine that if, if someone is not interested into architecture or cities, it, it, it is hard for them to listen to, to, to such a podcast. That's why I created my own podcast where I try to be really, really um, kind of educational in a way that I try to really use the uh, nomenclature that is understandable by different people and i think that this is the most important part that when you try to create a podcast or where you listen to podcasts you need to understand it Uh, because again as i mentioned like to me a podcast can have exactly the same information that you can find for example in a book or in some kind of a report so it has to be extremely uh available in a way Mm -hmm. so there, there are no podcasts that uh, influence your, your thoughts about how you urban plan or design. Uh, I think that uh, there might be a couple of them that I was uh, that I was listening to uh, that can influence me uh, a bit. And I mean, as I as I mentioned before, I mean there are not so many podcasts about cities that I'm listening to mm-hmm. because often I. I listen podcasts for the experience, so, uh, but 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 also to learn something. And if I was to mention some podcasts that I um, that I listen to that can influence me a lot uh, during my work, I would say that there are some like, for example, the Urbanist from the Monocle or Ninety Nine Percent Invisible, but these are like the biggest podcasts yeah. to say like very very popular very known podcasts but there is a lot of other podcasts out there as well mm. and i think that if you ask me about if something is influencing me i would say that there are many different podcasts from uh, different uh, official city uh, plan planning offices or transportation offices and i was even researching them today and i found some and i think that it is extremely important where, for example, a city, a city council, a city planning team, they share their uh, ideas for the city with the listeners in a way of a podcast. Exactly, exactly. And Martin, you mentioned that your podcast is more educational. What do you mean by this? Uh, so I hope it is like this. Uh, that's my aim uh, to basically talk about topics that might be complicated if you look at them but i try to break them down so they might be understandable by many different people so what i mean here that if you have uh, a topic let's say gentrification when you hear gentrification you might be what the hell is that (laughs) and my aim is with the podcast to break it down in a way that i would use very appro- like understandable 
words, nomenclature. So I really, really would love that even my grandma or my mom or my sister, my dad, or someone who from other part of the world, they would understand it the same way as I do. Mm. Uh, and, 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 and I think that that's how I'm trying to make my podcast as well. So it, 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 it has this very low entry barrier for a listener. Yeah. So who, so who is your, your target group? Like the, the professionals or the, the people that not really working with city development? Uh, I would say it's, um, it's mix because I think that the, 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 the biggest target group for me would be people who are not connected to architecture and urbanism in a way. And I mean here that every one of us who lives in a city is influencing it somehow. And I know that many of us are not, uh, are not aware that we influence our cities, that we design it by our decisions every day. So with my podcast, I would really like to address those everyday issues and everyday challenges that we all have. But in a way that people can listen to this podcast and say, oh, okay, I really, I, 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 I haven't noticed, but it is like this. And that's the first thing. So kind of to visualize the challenges that we have in the cities, but also to try to give some solutions. Mm. So, so someone after listening to this podcast can say, okay, so in the podcast, even if there was kind of a city planning expert, I would love to break it down in a way that a listener after listening to this podcast can take this knowledge and, and use it, make, go outside to, on the street and kind of apply it in his own neighborhood. Yeah. So to, if I understand you correctly, so your podcast is more uh, to, it's not a technical podcast, but more about this. Uh, making a story telling about cities easy for the citizens to understand what's going on and even to be part of this uh, city development process. I think so. I mean, I, I of course would love if uh, people from the uh, from the architecture, cities, and urban planning in- industry would listen to me. I mean, that would be a that would be a great honor. That is a great honor. I'm I'm, I'm listening. I'm actually listening <laughs> to your uh, English podcast. Yes, yes, thank you, thank you, and and I and I appreciate it that that people from uh, inside the um, this, uh, this 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 market can can listen to me as well. But I I am I really need to emphasize that I I would love uh, that people out from outside the market would listen to me uh, as well and to, to 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 listen to the to the message that I have. So I think that I also try to talk about topics that are attached to the cities, but maybe we, we don't even think about it. So one of the last episodes I had what about, was about the food waste. Yeah. And you might think like food waste, like what does it have to do with urban planning? <sighs> and then when you listen to the talk, you kind of realize that it has a lot. Mm. Uh, and that's how I, I kind of try to be very broad in a way when I, when I think about the topics, but also like stick to the city as a kind of main theme for for the podcast exactly exactly because it is about your podcast like urbcast which about the urban uh, life and urban uh, atmosphere so you mentioned that some cities has a podcast and you say that it is good so why you think it's good that these cities has podcast or podcasting from which point of view you think it's good i think that the podcast is a very um, for, for, for like nowadays, for, for times that we live in now, it is extremely accessible tool because we are always like maybe not, maybe less dur- during the pandemic, but we are always, you know, in a hurry and we need to catch the train and, and we need to pick up children from the, from the kindergarten and so on. And I think that podcast is something that you can have with, with you for the most of the day. I mean, of course, I don't encourage everyone to listen to the podcast for the whole day because you might be <laughs> tired. But I would say that it is way easier to listen to the podcast somewhere on the, on the go. And I would say that the cities who are trying to share the knowledge and their ideas for the city with the citizens are the ones who are seeing the, the, the future and, see, and seeing the potential in the um uh, in the technology that can help us and you mentioned the vr i think that vr is also a part of it but maybe 
it will be the next step, even though it's already uh, accessible in, in some cities, I would say that podcast is something in, uh, in between. So you can kind of boil down the information that you have as a city planning office. And if you introduce it in a way of, of, of a podcast, for example, mm. you kind of propose an idea with this very, in, in this very accessible, uh, in this very accessible way. So I think that cities who are, that are uh, uh, investigating how podcasts can, can, uh, can influence urban planning are, are very, very lucky in a way. The, the residents are very lucky. <laughs> yeah, actually both uh, the cities and uh, the c- citizens. But t- tell me, yeah, I, like as I understand you, so you, you, you mentioned that uh, cities are more willing to create a relationship with their citizen and showing like what is uh, with their citizens and showing like, okay, we are thinking about this project, we are working with this project and you as a citizen, you're part of this uh, and this is what's going on. Like it's to give the updates to the citizens about what's going on and being so open. And do you think it's, because we talked also about the VR, I think VR, it's a bit not really accessible to all the people like the podcast. But the question here is, Maybe the podcast is not really popular within as a for the uh, for the citizens. So, do you think it's a good tool to to use and to deliver the message of the city? Um, I think that we are still a bit far from the literal meaning of podcast changes the city. I think that, of course, the we have the law and the legislation that influences our cities and we still might be far from an audio file <laughs> as a podcast to, to change the city, but what, what it can do right now, it can influence both the decision makers and the citizens, because I think it goes both ways. Imagine that there is the city planning office or the city architect who records a podcast about the decisions that he or she needs to take in the future but also I will see that there might be a group of residents, some think tank that record a podcast to address the problems in the city. And they would love to spread the message about the problems and challenges they have, but also the ideas and potential. So they would kind of send, try to send this message in a way of a podcast to the city planning office or to the, to the, to the city hall. So I think that podcast is kind of a very nice tool for capturing the message and kind of making this synthesis out of it. And I think that this is where we have the chance to, to use it. And I think that to me, the podcast has this extremely important educational uh, character. So I think that once we record those uh, podcasts about cities and we invite interesting guests, we show that podcast is not only, you know, about fun and it's not only about relaxation so it's not only about crime stories or <laughs> or about some other fantasy stories but it's 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 real yeah exactly and you just remind reminded me about the educational part and i i have my colleague here in uh, in stockholm and she worked for a municipality and the municipality asked her to use a very specific uh, method to, to calculate something related mm. to parks. And she didn't know that, uh, so she Googled how to work with mm. this method. And what she found is that my, my podcast episode, because I recorded with the head of, uh, in, in that municipality that she created this method, and I was asking her, so what is this method about? Can you explain it to me? And can you break it down to me? So my colleague actually learned use this method by by listening to the podcast and i was so happy when she told me about this <laughs> and yeah exactly i that that's the goal because i think that the, the podcast can uh, take the take this technical knowledge this kind of professional so to say knowledge and spread it in a very accessible way and i think that that's that's the brilliant example of how you can use the podcast and just to give one more example when i was uh, preparing for this talk, I found out that there is a center for cities in London yeah. and their mission is to help the UK's largest cities and towns realize their economic potential mm. and build a community and educate about, about how to grow the, the city and grow opportunities and prosperity for people. And 
how do they do it? Of course, they organize some gatherings, some lectures, and yeah. so on. But when the pandemic comes, what they did, I mean, they, they, they've been even doing it before, but they, they are releasing a series of podcasts with, uh, with experts, mm. but they kind of explain to the citizens like how things work, what are the decisions to be made, uh, to be made and, and, and I think that this is how podcasts can work right now. Yeah, exactly. And actually, I have also a, a dream or a goal that I'm working on is uh, to make a podcast as an official tool because now, as I mentioned, like the story with my colleague, it's it's non-official. You know, it's like uh, it's this podcast episode helped her to understand the method and to work with this urban design and park project. So that's a kind of a tool, but you cannot make it official from that way. But my dream is that, you know, when we do public hearing, like here in Sweden, as I mentioned in the beginning of the episode, every development project should have a public hearing, which means that the architects, the city, will do a presentation about what's going to happen to this specific area and what's the plan. And then people, uh, the citizen that live in that area or close to that area can be part of this public hearing event and also mm. submit their feedback and say, oh, this is good, this is bad, no, I don't like this, you, sh- you should change this, and so on. So what I'm thinking is that the public hearing is usually done physically, and uh, when uh, the city put the maps on the table or on the wall, and then like three hours they open the, the room and let people get inside and give their feedback. What I'm dreaming about is imagine that the city actually record podcast episodes about what is this or about the city development explaining what's going to happen uh, the challenges the uh, the solutions and the details so if i cannot attend physically i can listen to the podcast and get the story of what is going to happen to my city or my area and by that i can submit my feedback through the email or somehow like I don't know, there should be some kind of way to submit my feedback. But what I mean, like the aim of the podcast being part of public hearing is that you make the story available for everybody. Uh, Even if I like, I belong to this area, but maybe I am in Mm. in New York in a travel, but at the same time, I want to be part of the change and submit my feedback. So I I think this is like, this is a big potential for cities to use, podcast and uh, public hearing events. W- what do you think, Martin? Any reflections, thoughts? Yeah, I mean, that, that would be great. I, I, I remember we also mentioned this, this topic during our talk in, a, in my podcast, and I have also written an article about uh, digital ways to reach out to people, to citizens during the pandemic. And I wrote about the, the podcast as a tool as well. I also mentioned our talk because I think that it is feasible. I can completely imagine that a podcast, an audio file after such a gathering or public hearing could be uh, an official tool and uh, official supplement to the documentation. And someone can say that, but we already have them. Like sometimes we might have uh, online streaming exactly. of, a, of a meeting in the, in, the, in, the, in the city council. And I think that now it's important to emphasize that, of course, it's extremely great that we have those public streamings, but this public streaming is also more captivating in a way. So often you, if you want to have the online streaming live, you need to be there in front of your computer at certain time. Mm. And even though it still, it, it still might be safe in some form, it always like involves your eyes and your attention. Yeah. Whereas the podcast could be this audio synthesis of of the most important things that happened during this meeting and i think that it 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 will happen uh, once people start to kind of realize the potential of podcasts as mm, <laughs> so to say serious tool not a uh, not something that gives joy only exactly because i think here here is the point of why podcast is not becoming an official urban planning and design tool because People think, let's say not all people, uh, majority of people think like podcast is for entertainment and you cannot really use it in a serious uh, way like uh, planning cities, you know. 
But at the same time, we all know like there is a big difference between listening to an audio or watching a video. Like watching a video, you need to look at the video. You, you, you cannot multitask. At, at the other side, if you listen to podcasts, it's so easy. Like if you're in the bus, uh, you're driving, you're walking with your dog, uh, you're preparing food, you have it in your ears, you listen to it. And at the same time, you multitask. It's not like watching something. Uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, that, that's about the attention span that gets uh, smaller and smaller nowadays uh, because we are distracted by so many things. Uh, at least to me, I mean, of course, I can speak only for myself. Podcast is this tool because like I, after spending many hours in front of the computer during my, my daily work, I mean, the, sometimes the last thing I want to do after work is watch uh, <laughs> the screen again, you know, of yeah. the TV or something. And I and this actually I think that not only me uh, is, um, is is the one who is who is thinking in this way. So then always I can listen to the podcast. But um, yeah, I mean going back to to this official tool, uh, maybe we need to wait a bit until it gets official in a way. But I think the more official actors and players and offices. Uh, start using podcasts as a tool for sharing the message both ways again, mm. the the sooner we will have this uh, chance for them to become the official tool. And here I will just give one more example of the uh, American uh, Planning Association, which has a weekly uh, podcast about, about all the things they, they do about the affordable housing, about urban design. And I feel that after listening to such a podcast, you start feeling that this American Planning Association is uh, is is doing things, you know? It's, yeah. it's not only just somewhere there, it, it produces the, the, the daily insights or weekly insights of their work. And, and I think that this is amazing part of podcasts that they bring people, the listeners, the residents closer to the ones who are speaking to the microphone in uh, in certain moments. Exactly. As, as uh, we mentioned in the beginning of this episode, that it's about building a relationship between the city authorities and the citizens like you're you're so many steps closer to the to the citizens because now it's like citizens need to go to the home page to read different documents you know like these very long documents in order to understand what's going on uh, when is this project going to be done how much it costs and so on but imagine a podcast then the city the entire city is available on every single body's mobile phone like it's just by one click you can listen the people can listen to what's going on in the city what's going to happen how much is the budget when is the deadline who is going to build this area so it's also about getting closer to your citizens and i think that to to summarize in a way uh podcast is also a very uh, good tool for it uh, because it brings uh, the listener and the author of the podcast extremely close. I've heard about many podcasters uh, going to some conferences and the people who approached them as you know fans that they would love to talk about, they were mostly the podcast listeners because yeah. somehow when you create a podcast, you grab the attention of someone for you know for a longer time mm. than. Uh, than uh, in a YouTube video, for example, because the YouTube video might be a very short form. If you read an article, you still might read the article uh, in a shorter time. But when you decide to spend one hour with with your podcaster, yeah. you kind of start feel very close to him. And I I experienced this with the podcast I'm listening to as well. Mm. Uh, I think it brings me very close to the author that that once I meet him or her, I, I, I would I would really love to just talk to her because I, I feel that I know her in a way. Yeah. And that's, that can be the relation between the, the residents and the city making uh, officials and yeah. not only. Yeah, ex exactly, exactly. There is a, as you mentioned, like if I Google about, uh, let's say, I want to know what's going to happen in, in my area and what are the development projects. So let, I will Google, I will get to uh, the municipality's homepage, and after like minutes, I just will like leave it and that's it. But in a podcast, you, you're you like in, in a, uh, how to say it? There is a relationship with a podcast. You listen to it and you look uh, forward to the, listen to the next episode. So there is a story going on. 
And uh, related to your story, I met once I met a um, guy here in, my, uh, in the company I work at, and he told me, oh, Mustafa, I like you so much. You're with me every day. I, I, <laughs> first, I didn't understand what he meant. And he, then he told me, no, but you're in my ears every day. I'm listening to you, and I feel that I know you. Like exactly how you say, uh, Martin, that you, you build a very strong connection. And this is what is actually good for the citizens and the, the the cities that this connection there is a relationship there is a trust and people just share their story and not hiding something exactly i can just give one more example of uh, of a very nice podcast when i think about it right now because once you ask me about which podcast inspire me in my yeah. work i mean i was kind of uh, i didn't i didn't mention many of them because i i don't listen to to, to many of them uh uh, that, that are about cities, but one of them might be Invisible City, which is by former chief city planner of uh, Toronto, uh, Jennifer uh, Kismat. And I, I think it's so great when you see someone who is working for the city planning office, for example, and then she decided decides to, uh, after after she, she stops working there, uh, she decides to create a podcast to share the insights that she had you know, at her work, I, I think it's amazing. Yeah, that's 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 really amazing. So, Martin, when do you think that uh, a podcast can be or will be an official tool in in a municipality? Is it soon I, or? I I think it, it's not gonna be very soon. I think that I kind of uh, changed my mind a bit uh, since our first talk because I was very like uh, motivated during <laughs> our first talk and I was like yeah it's, it's for sure gonna be very soon but I I, I, I sadly I don't think it, it, it's gonna be very soon Why? but I think that I, I, I think that you know when you try to make something being legally binding it, it needs many 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 years sometimes it's decade, decades of years uh, so I think that we might still wait a bit for a podcast to become a, a, like a planning tool officially, but I think that through education, we are on a very, very good way, both uh, you and me and many, many other uh, um, podcasters in the, in the world. So you don't believe that uh, a city will say, okay, now we have a podcast as an official tool uh, within our urban planning and city development just like uh, how we use a PDF uh, and images and uh, yeah, 3D modeling. You don't imagine this will happen in the coming, let's say, three years. Uh, unfortunately, no. I, I think that that cities might start, start realizing that podcast has a big potential, mm. but I think that it might be first used as a, uh, as a way to spread the message, yeah. but not in a way to... Uh, to change the reality in a way. I think that we, we are still uh, a bit uh, far from, from it. Yeah, I, I, I agree with, with you, actually. The first step is going to be, okay, when they realize podcast is very popular and people start to listen to it, so they will use it as a platform to spread the message or as just one-way communication, like to inform the citizens. But um, when they start to practice and learn how, how to podcast and how to send the message, then they will see the potential of podcast as a platform to be a tool, an official tool to, to plan and yeah, develop cities. Exactly. I, I think that it might be as it was, for example, with uh, participatory budget. So uh, in the beginning, like when it was introduced in Poland, for example, uh, you know, it was vague, like people didn't know maybe how to use because you vote online. Yeah. So this participatory budget is about a pool of projects that people can invent uh, themselves and they gather votes of other citizens and the projects can be applied and built in the city. And I think that at the beginning, like when it was this online voting uh, and it is still like online, on, online voting, like people might be confused a bit, but it's like a couple of years and now it's very popular method of, of uh, participatory design in the city. Uh, for example, in Warsaw. So I think that it has to, you know, come through a long way, but at some point it, it will be there. Yeah. So it's a, it's a great talk. And tell me what are you planning? Like what is the next step for your podcast or how is, how is it going to be? 
so I think that I might uh, consider <laughs> showing up on Clubhouse from, from time to time uh, <laughs> because it, it, it's, uh, it's a great fun. I, it's my first talk on Clubhouse. I heard about it, but um, it's, a, it's, it's a very funny experience. And thank you for inviting me here. So that might be first idea. Uh, the second uh, idea is that I really, really... Uh, would love to expand my podcast and yeah, I mean, keep the pace and have this bi weekly Polish episode and bi weekly uh, English episode. Uh, and the third thing, I'm just uh, starting to uh, build my website and wish me luck with this because it's nice. extremely time consuming. Yeah. I <laughs> think. Yeah, I remember the, well, uh, it's, I'm, I'm so happy to have you here and uh, to talk. I think it's uh, sometimes, you know, I think it's with the clubhouse is it's cool like just to chill and talk and have a conversation it's not like really very well structured like in when we record a podcast mm. so it's it's nice to just chill and talk about interesting things and the second sure. thing good luck with your podcast with the um, english and the polish episodes i think you you rock and also <laughs> building the website it's yeah it's a really big project uh, oh, I, yeah. I remember <laughs> i i did it during the the vacation, the summer vacation, I had okay. three weeks, and you know, I, I, it was COVID. Uh, we couldn't travel anywhere, so I'd be like, okay, I have to do it now. <laughs> Otherwise, it's there's no way. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, yes. Yeah. So, uh, by the way, I have a question for you. Who is your uh, dream guest? Uh, dream guest. Uh, that's a that's a very very tough <laughs> question uh, because I I need to say that there are many many people who inspire me a lot. Uh, give me give so, me the top three people. So for sure it would be uh, it would be extremely extremely interesting to talk to uh, Jan Gell. Yeah. It's, it, it might be not a surprise, but but as as basically you uh, talk in his uh, in, in in the episode that you made with him like. You've been uh, influenced by him a lot, yeah. And it, it is for our generation, of course, uh, this very important uh, person in in, in uh, city planning in, in general. So I think that this is something that 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 inspires me a lot. Uh, the second the second person would be uh, someone from the U.S. I would say I think that it might be, for example, uh, Richard uh, Richard uh, Florida. Cool. Is, you're you're uh, aiming to the moon. Martin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, I, I, I read some of his books and I would just love to, I mean, I, I love talking to the authors of the books because I love to kind of go beyond the book yeah. uh, and, and kind of uh, talk about the things that were not explained there in a, in a uh, way that I, that was enough for me. And the third person, let's say uh, it would be um, a city mayor. I would love to talk with someone who is uh, and managing a city, mm -hmm. and let's say it might be, uh, uh, it, it it could have been a, a president of uh, the president, the, the president or the mayor of Warsaw. Let's say so. Wow. My, my city. That's cool. That's cool. <laughs> By the way, you know that uh, Richard Fl Florida, he has a podcast. You know that? Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I I heard about it. I didn't mention this podcast in the, in our talk because I haven't listened to it too much, yeah. but. Uh, you mean the, the side, uh, side sidewalk uh, lab, right? Or I think I think it's called. Let me Google. It's called City Talk. Um, wait, uh, maybe. Uh, to be honest, sidewalk. not sure. Not sure. I need to it check later. Be, yeah, it, it might be this one. Ah, uh, and that, but that's very good that you reminded me because this is the podcast I've been listening a bit as well. So it's worth mentioning, and uh, I would recommend it too. Awesome. That's really cool. Thank you so much, Martin. And I would love to to uh, give the space as well to our great listeners. If you have uh, any thoughts, reflections, uh, if you want to share with us, with us what is your favorite podcast, why do you listen to podcasts, do you really believe that podcast is important to have it in the city planning? So yeah, feel free to step up and share your uh, reflections with us. I, I will just press something. I'm I'm a beginner to. Oh wait, I think we we have something. Yes, uh, Agata. Hi. Hi, hi guys. Hey, this welcome. This is Agata from Chicago. Hi, nice to meet you, Agata. Well, thanks for sharing your thoughts and your experience with the podcast as a tool for urban planning. Uh, 
I work in Chicago planning agency, the regional planning agency. Um, mm -hmm. So that was uh, interesting. And I have a couple of reflections. Sure. And a couple of things resonated with me during your conversation. Uh, so one thing, uh, an important and or importance for the, of the storytelling for the urban planning professionals, as this is pretty uh, complex mm -hmm. thing, True. and many times uh, us professionals uh, face this difficulty of talking about these things uh, to people who are beyond the profession in a clear, uh, concise, and persuasive way. So I see the podcast as a you know playground uh, to exercise. Mm -hmm the storytelling and uh, communication skills in the realm of the profession. Mm. Uh, on the other hand, I think that the, the podcast might be good as the addition or com complementary uh, tool, but not the major thing when we are actually looking for the public input and what I see uh, in my work, it rather goes uh, with using more visual and uh, interactive tools, which allow people not only to hear about the other uh, concepts and the changes and the potential uh, for their neighborhood or the city, but to also interact and, uh, you know, add their comments and add their suggestions. Uh, I work with GIS a lot. So yeah, I, I saw it in I'm your uh, profile description. Really cool. Yeah. I'm biased toward the uh, visuals and <laughs> spatial, maps. <laughs> obviously. Uh, the, once you step into this way of thinking, it's really hard to step out of it. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. <laughs> but yeah, I agree with you, with you that uh, there should be a communication package that you have the drawings, uh, yeah, the maps, the renders, and also the podcasts, just to make it available as much as possible. Yeah, I agree. And it, it can provide, you know, a good uh, way of participate for people with the vision impairments. Uh, on the other hand, it will not serve well uh, people with hearing problems. So uh, if we want to serve the whole range of uh, people and uh, reach out to everyone, mm. uh, no matter of their abilities. Uh, it would be good to employ all the tools possible. Of course, mm -hmm. yeah. Do, do you imagine, do you think it's possible that in, in the municipality that you work with, that will use a podcast like in the coming years? I don't work for a municipality, it's the regional agency, so okay. we actually serve 284 municipalities. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so do you do you see that there is a well of using a podcast mm -hmm. somehow? But yeah, uh, totally the podcast can be integrated with the whole platform which is used for public engagement. And it will be just one of the option or one of the dimension the message is spread out. Mm. It's it's so it's so great to to have you here, Agata, and uh, I'm uh, I'm very happy. I, I it's a total surprise because I for me because I was mentioning the American Planning Association, and uh, I mean mm -hmm. I, I couldn't I couldn't be more uh, <laughs> like 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 more uh, precise with my uh, with my with, with, with the choice of the of the examples I I prefer to, and I think that you you are right with 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 those two things. The first one is that we can treat the podcast as a playground. And I think that it, it is a way for us to try to test certain ways of reaching out to people uh, to see what resonates, what is not resonating and so on. And I mean, the clubhouse is a, is a way to resonate with people in a, in a way as, as well, I think. And the second thing is that you, it's very good that you mentioned uh, uh, some people with disabilities because I think that it's also extremely important to, to mention that uh, podcast might not reach to 100% of people, of course. So uh, I think that we need to think about other tools as well and uh, use them simultaneously. 
Yeah. So that's, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Each tool has its limitations. Exactly. So. <laughs> exactly. But it's o- yeah. always better to have two tools instead of one. Uh, mm. I got a. What is your favorite podcast? Do you, uh. do you listen to podcasts or you're not a podcast uh, consumer? <laughs> I am. Uh, lately, I've been listening to Brene Brown a lot. <laughs> cool. cool. Uh, she is a social sciences researcher and uh, a pretty famous like <laughs> star person <laughs> here in the U.S. Uh, touching a lot of, of, of the social aspects of our lives. So I'm always interested how to bring other disciplines and insights, which obviously overlap with urban planning. That's so uh, interdisciplinary thing that, you know, you will find uh, intersection with a different discipline, no matter where you turn. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you, do uh, you so, yeah. Do, do you think mm-hmm. that you, you will start a GIS podcast talking about GIS and explaining to people? Uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe it's something to consider. But as I said, I am so visual person. (laughs) 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 So that uh, kind of cranks when I cannot see what you guys are talking about. (laughs) (laughs) But but that's even better that you joined because I I also was expecting that on Clubhouse you can see other people, but there's the video that it's uh, only voice and... uh, Mm-hmm. And, and and thanks for for staying anyways uh, even though it was only the voice yeah well i was working <laughs> <laughs> actually that's awesome that's really awesome uh, great so, i'm really happy thank you so much for your input uh, agata let's see if uh, there are more people that are willing to uh, be brave like agata and share reflections thank, thanks for having me that oh. was my debut big <laughs> pleasure too. big pleasure Mine too. thank you <laughs> thanks do you get something, Martin, on your board? Uh, no, no. Uh, I, I I'm waiting here. Uh, as 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 I as far as I know, it works that someone raises hand and I then allow them to uh, to speak, which which worked with with uh, Agatha. But so far, I don't see any any raised hands. So we can just wait a a, a bit. And if if not, I guess that that we just. Yeah. Don't have any more questions. Yes, yes, awesome. But actually, then it's really good you learn uh, to manage uh, Clubhouse. Yes, uh, every every day I try to learn uh, some new things, and this is the outcome for for today. Awesome, awesome. Okay, uh, I don't see like uh, people raising their hands, but so let's. Uh, then let's finish this great clubhouse uh, event i'm so happy Le- first let me thank all the listeners for being here for us for this uh, hour and big thanks to you agata for stepping up and sharing your reflections with us thank you so much for being here and martin thank you so much for giving your time and sharing your ideas thoughts about how podcasts can be an official tool to plan our cities thank you for coming uh thank you very much mustafa that was the, the greatest honor for me because uh, that was first or one of the first i think it's first like uh, invitation to to like other uh, podcast or or event and uh, it was a very fun experience for me to talk as uh, as as urban planner as designer and not uh, ask the questions myself so thank you for this uh, opportunity yeah yeah i <laughs> I, I know this like it's it's so so <laughs> so cool to be interviewed and not to only interview people. Yes. Yeah. So thank you so much, everybody. Uh, greetings from Stockholm and wish you a great time. Bye. Thank you very much and bye bye. Well, thank you so much for listening to Urbanistica podcast. I hope you really enjoyed this episode. You learned something new and also got inspired by the guest. Don't forget to share the episode on your social media and recommend it to people you think they are really interested in this topic. Thank you so much again for giving your valuable time to Urbanistica podcast. 
I am Mustafa Sharif. Keep up the good work. Keep loving cities.